Hey there! Want to join in on the learning adventure? Okay, now let's see if you can figure out what 456 plus 789 is. Take your time and show your work. Ready? 456 plus 789. Well, here's a neat trick to solve this problem. We'll start by adding the hundreds, then the tens, and finally the ones. So 400 plus 700 equals 1,100. Next, we have 50 plus 80, which equals 130. And finally, 6 plus 9 equals 15. Now we'll add up our totals, 1,100, 130, and 15. That gives us a sum of 1,245. So 456 plus 789 is indeed 1,245. Great job figuring that out. Now let's do another warm-up challenge. What is 2,000 minus 876? To solve this subtraction problem, we again start from the leftmost digits. 2,000 minus 800 equals 1,200. Next, we have 1,200 minus 70, which equals 1,130. And finally, 1,130 minus 6 equals 1,124. So 2,000 minus 876 is 1,124. Next, it's time for multiplication. So 36 times 25 equals what? Well, here's a clever way to solve this. Notice that 25 is the same as a quarter of 100. So we can rewrite the problem as 36 times 100 divided by 4. Now it is easy to multiply. 36 times 100 equals 3,600. And 3,600 divided by 4 is 900. So 36 times 25 is indeed 900. Let's move on to division. So 1,440 divided by 12 equals what? Here's a simple approach. Multiply 12 by 100 to get 1,200. Then multiply 12 by 20 to get 240. Add these two products together. 1,200 plus 240 equals 1,440. Now divide 1,440 by 12 to get 120. So 1,440 12 is indeed 120. All right, let's tackle some fractions. For the first problem, Vero has three quarters of a pizza and wants to share it equally with three friends. How much of the pizza does each friend get? Well, we have a total of four parts representing one whole pizza since the denominator is four. When Vero shares with three friends, each friend gets a quarter of the pizza. So each friend gets three quarters divided by three, which simplifies to a quarter. Another fraction problem. Add two fifths plus three tenths. To add fractions, they need to have the same denominator. The least common denominator for five and ten is ten. So we convert two fifths to four tenths by multiplying both the numerator and denominator by two. Now that the denominators are the same, we can simply add the numerators, 4 tenths plus 3 tenths equals 7 tenths. So 2 fifths plus 3 tenths is indeed 7 tenths. Now let's dive into percentages. For the first percentage problem, Vero bought a toy for $200. The toy has a 25% discount. How much is the discount? A percentage is a way of representing a part of a whole as a fraction of 100. So a 25% discount means a discount of 25 one hundredths of $200. To find this amount, we can multiply $200 by 25% or 25 one hundredths 
Doing the multiplication, we get $50. So the discount on the toy is $50. Here's another percentage problem. In a classroom of 40 students, 30 are girls. What percentage are the girls? To solve this, we can follow these steps. First, divide the number of girls by the total number of students. 30 divided by 40 equals 0 0.75. Next, multiply the result by 100 to express it as a percentage. So 0 0.75 times 100 equals 75%. Therefore, 30 out of 40 students is 75%. Now it's time for equations. An equation is a mathematical statement that two expressions are equal. To solve an equation, we aim to find the value of the variable that makes the equation true. Let me start with the first equation. x plus 45 equals 120. Our goal is to isolate x on one side of the equation. To do this, we'll subtract 45 from both sides of the equation. On the right side, 120 minus 45 equals 75. Therefore, x equals 75. Next, let's solve another equation. 3x equals 81. Here, x is multiplied by 3, and we want to isolate x. To do this, we'll divide both sides of the equation by 3. So 81 divided by 3 equals 27. Therefore, x equals 27. All right, now it's time for the speed round where you need to quickly solve some problems. Get ready, here we go. 72 divided by 9 equals, well, 70 to 9 is 8. 15% of 200 equals. 15% of 200 is 30. 8 times 14 equals. 8 times 14 is 112. 450 minus 278 equals. 450 minus 278 is 172. 2 thirds plus a 6 equals. To solve this, we need to find a common denominator. Wow, you are doing great. Let's move on to the final word problem. A bus can carry 48 students. If 192 students go on a trip, how many buses are needed? To solve this, we'll need to divide the total number of students by the capacity of each bus. So 192 divided by 48 equals 4. Therefore, 4 buses are needed to transport all the students. And that's it. You've reached the end of today's learning adventure. Remember, practice makes perfect. So keep honing your math skills and you'll become a math superstar in no time. Thanks for joining me on this learning journey. If you enjoyed this adventure, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more exciting content. Catch you in the next one. Until then, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep being awesome. Bye for now.